in this video, I'm going to show how different differentiation rules can be used in combination to obtain a derivative of a rather complicated function. I have two functions here that I'm going to use to uh, demonstrate. Starting with this one, we have this uh, function as a product, 6x squared minus 5 times the quantity 7x to the 4th minus 6, but all of it is squared. So when we compute the derivative, first thing we have to take into account is the outermost function. In this case, the outermost operation that's happening is squared. So in other words, we have to use the general power rule first. So what we end up with is f prime of x is going to be using the power rule on everything that's inside here squared. We're going to bring the exponent down. So we get a 2 here. Times Everything that's in those outermost parentheses, 6x squared minus 5 times 7x to the 4th minus 6, raised to the 2 minus 1 power. So that's just raised to the first power, but anything to the first power is itself. Um, and then what's left is we have to take what was inside those parentheses. and take the derivative of that. So what I just used here was the general power rule which states that the derivative of any function raised to a power is like in the power rule you've been using n times that function raised to the n minus 1 power times the derivative of that function that's being exponentiated. So in this case, g of x is what is inside the uh, parentheses, so it's what was being squared. Um, and in this case, uh, n, the exponent uh, was equal to 2. So now I'm not finished yet. I still have to take the derivative of what's inside. But what's inside? It's a product. So for that, we must use a product rule. So to handle that part, okay, this I'm just going to repeat. I use a square brackets to distinguish my parentheses. So the product rule is for the second function times the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of this function, 6x squared minus 5, is going to be the derivative of just 6x squared because the 5 has a constant, this derivative is 0. So we're going to get 12x. So that being differentiated gives us, gives you this. Plus, so continuing with the product rule, the first function in your product, 6x squared minus 5, times the derivative of the se second function. So we get 4 times 7 times x cubed, so 28x cubed. Okay, so using the general power rule and the product rule, we're able to compute the derivative. Now, we could go to a lot of trouble to uh, simplify this. I should mention that the problems like this in Ox do not require this uh, simplification, so you can uh, stop here. Okay. Now, um, for this uh, second function, here we have uh, this function, 10x to the 4 minus 5x minus 4, all raised to the 3 halves, but then that is divided by this function down here, 8x to the minus 2 plus 7x plus 4. So first and foremost, this is a quotient. So we're actually going to use the quotient rule first. So of all these rules that we have, product rule, quotient rule, general power rule, as far as which one happens first, think about how the function is built up from x. You know, we form this function, then it raises to the 3 halves, then we have this function. But then what is the last thing that happens? We divide. So it's that outermost operation that determines what differentiation rule is applied first. So using the quotient rule, that would give us the bottom function, 
8x to the minus 2 plus 7x plus 4 times the derivative of the top function, the derivative of the numerator. So that would be all of that, 10x to the 4 minus 5x minus 4, 3 halves, and the derivative of that, which we'll do a little bit later. Okay. Now right now I'm just showing what the quotient rule gives you. So now we have minus the numerator, undifferentiated, times the derivative of the denominator. So 8x to the minus 2 plus 7x plus 4. And I'm writing the prime here to indicate that I'm going to be different. I still need to differentiate that. I'm just not doing it yet. And I recommend you write it out this way just so you can keep track of what rules you've applied and what, which ones you haven't yet. So all of that's divided by the denominator squared. Okay. So the quotient rule has uh, gotten us this far, but now we have to compute derivatives of these um, factors here. So this one, because we have a function raised to the 3 halves power, that's going to require the general power rule again, like in the previous example. And here, for derivative of this, we can um, take the derivative of these three terms individually and add them together. But don't forget your parentheses. All this must be in parentheses. So now I'm going to write this out again, but I'm actually going to compute the derivatives of uh, these uh, factors. So repeating this, 8x to the minus 2 plus 10x plus 4. And now, using a general power rule on this, I bring the exponent down, so 3 halves times all of this in parentheses, raised to the 3 halves minus 1 power. Well, that's going to be 1 half. Um, then, finishing up a general power rule, I have to take the derivative of what's being exponentiated. I have to take the derivative of this. So that's 10x to the 4 minus 5x minus 4 prime. Uh, but this derivative is relatively straightforward to work out, so I'm going to just go ahead and do that now. Um, so we have 4 times 10 times x cubed, so that's going to be 40x cubed, minus the derivative of 5x, so that's just going to be minus 5, because the derivative of x is 1. And then the minus 4, that's a constant, so we don't get anything uh, from that. So that ends up being a derivative of what's inside. So this arrow I'm drawing here indicates that this came from this. And now the use of a general power rule is complete. We now have a derivative of that part. Now continuing on to this term, so I repeat what I had before. 10x to the 4 minus 5x minus 4 to the 3 halves. And now I take a derivative of this. Using a power rule on each term, I have minus 2 times 8 times x to the minus 3, so minus 16x to the minus 3, and then plus derivative of 7x. So the derivative of x is 1, so the derivative of 7x is 7. And then the plus 4 is not going to give us anything, so we can close that. And then we just have to remember to divide by the denominator of the original function squared. And we're done. So uh, again, there's no need to uh, simplify here. So we have to, it's important to understand how the, the function is built up. First and foremost, is it a product of things? Is it a quotient of, of things? Is it, is it a uh, uh, function that's raised to a power? So in the latter case, you would use the general power rule first. If first and foremost, it is a quotient of our functions, you use the quotient rule first, and so on. Um, and in the process of using whichever rule you choose, like quotient rule in this case, or general power rule in this case, uh, what you need to do is, in the process of applying those rules, you have to compute derivatives of portions of your original function. And then you ask yourself the same question again. What is this first and foremost? What rule do I need to use on this part? And as a result, you have to apply several of these rules in combination to produce these derivatives. Um, but all these rules, applied to the appropriate function, still work in exactly the same way um, as before.